you. And now, God is ready to transition you again. Not into another level, but into a whole new dimension. As we prepare to receive from God on this, your eighth pastoral anniversary, let's lay a little foundation and look at the significance of this number. Yeah. As most of us already know, the number eight represents new beginnings. Uh -huh. yeah. But as I began to research, I also found out that in Hebrew, the, num the number eight is Shimone uh -huh. from the root word Shemayan, uh -huh. which means to make fat, to color with fat, to super abound. As a participle, goal, it means one who abounds in strength. As a noun, it is super abundant fertility. It is abundant in oil. Eight is seven plus one. Right. Hence it is the number specially associated with resurrection and regeneration and the beginning of a new era or order. I'm here to tell you, great redeemer, Pastor Smallwood, yes. that God has sent me by here this week to declare and announce that he is ready to transition this ministry into a new era. He is ready to make you not just abundant, but super abundant. Over these past seven years, God has been laying the foundation in the house of God. He has been drawing people. He has been saving and changing lives. He has been teaching and transforming leaders and getting them into place so that when the harvest increases, there will be people in place to handle what is to come. Right. And that you embark on this eighth year anniversary and God prepares you to step into this new, super abundant, super fruitful, right. new dimension in him. Right. He revealed to me a few housekeeping things. All right, come on, come on now. Clean it, clean it. A few issues and rules that he needs to deal with before he brings you into this new realm in him. All right. Because a sacrifice is something that's difficult. Yes. 
something that's difficult to give. It's something that's difficult to give. Hallelujah. But then God, you turn around and say, but it's not reasonable. That it's not even easy. It's not hard. It's the least you can do, in other words. So how does sacrifice and reasonable go together? Because when you get saved, and when you come into full knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ, and when you give yourself to God, once you have walked into the kingdom, yes. once he has ordained you and healed you and fixed you, everything else that you do from there is just reasonable. Right, right, right. Oh, come on now. Yes. It should be easy. Why? Because he's given you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on now. You want to say, oh, God knows my heart. He knows what I'm doing. He knows I'm growing in God. Yeah, we all growing in God. But some of the stuff you do when you do it, don't you want to do? Oh, come on. It's right, but it's right. You have presented your bodies yes, Lord. as so many other things but holy. Look at this. You're giving yourself for less than what God is asking you to do. For drugs, for money, for sex. My God, I know what I'm talking about. You're giving yourself for less than that. For companionship, for favor. And God is asking that you would give yourself wholly and completely to his service. Amen. 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 And so for the first thing, we have to present our bodies. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. Our ears, our mind, our hearts, our spirits, our soul, our hands. Yes. Yes. If your hands are touching things, you ain't got no business touching. Come on now. If your hand is on somebody else's husband. church. Their body is here, but they're thinking about what they're going to go and cook when they leave the church. Their body is here, but their mind is on, they got to get up early for work so they can't worship me like they should. They can't bless me like they should because they're thinking about everything else they got to do except for me. So you're really not worshiping God in spirit and in truth because your body is here. Shout and dance. I'm sorry. You've got to, con to condition your mind. A lot of you cannot move forward in the things of God because you can't even win the battle in your mind. You can't even join the choir. You can't usher. You can't pray for nobody because you're steadily in your mind telling yourself and allowing the enemy to tell you why you can't do it. Why it won't work. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with the person God is asking you to pray for? You got to get out of your mind. You got to allow your mind to be transformed. You got to allow God to clear out all that junk and all those thoughts that are contrary to the word of God and begin to deposit into your mind thoughts that are edifying, thoughts that will grow you, thoughts that will lift Jesus up. The hardest battle for us to win is the battle in our minds. It is 
in the battlefield. But Paul said, you need to be able to win the battle in your mind because after a while, pastor's not going to always be there. That's right. The elders and the deacons and everyone is not going to always be there. That's right. And you need to be able to prove what is that good and perfect will of God for yourself. If the pastor doesn't answer and you're in the midst of a job and you're trying to say, should I accept this or not? And she doesn't answer. You should be able to get into the spirit and say, this is the will of God for my life. Say it. You've got to transform your mind. You've got to get out of negative thinking. Come on. Yes. My, yes. Lord. Yes. my Lord. My Lord. Yes. My mother calls it stinking thinking. I love it. Yes. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. That's why so many of us are depressed. Walking in fear. Because the enemy has our mind. Right. Anxious. Right. Because he's got our mind. Right. But we've got to be transformed. By the renewing of our mind. Yeah. Then, huh, Paul tells us, don't think too highly of yourself. Come on now. All right. All right. All right. Come on, this now. is the one I was a little nervous I'm about. Go ahead. 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 Don't think too highly of yourself. There are three things God gave me concerning this. Pride, yes, haughtiness, right, and arrogance. There you go. Too many of us are walking around prideful, right, haughty, right, and arrogant. You got a little education. You got a little anointing. And now can't nobody touch you. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't nobody say nothing to you. You can't be corrected because I know the word from myself. Let go of pride and haughtiness, yes. arrogance, All right. 
and disrespect. Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. Come on now. I don't know what that is, but I hear you guys. Some of you have been very disrespectful. Watch out. Jesus. Hey, Pastor Toro. My Lord, my Lord, just nasty, nasty. Then you say you walking around with the love of God. Look at that. Come on now. Word says bitterness and fresh water, salt water and fresh water can't come out the same way. You can't be up in here shouting and praising God. Then you cussing people out.
the Lord. You better let go of that takeover spirit. Uh -huh. You better let go of that Jezebel spirit. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. That manipulation. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. You better let it go. Let it go. In that new era, in this new dimension where God is taking this ministry, uh -huh. it cannot go. Do you hear me? Yeah. It cannot go. It has to be all spirit and no flesh. If you're around people who keep pulling you back into that old way, you need to change your friends. I don't care even if they are in the church. That's right. That's right. When they call you with that mess, I'm sorry, I can't go there. That's right. This is it. This is it. There you go. Let me help some of y'all out. Help us. Just don't answer the phone. That's it. That's true. See, we think that we gotta answer the phone. Especially because we got caller ID now. Just don't answer the phone. Don't, answer. don't respond to the text. You don't have to respond. I have freed myself from cell phones. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And people will say, I called you and I say, I know. <laughs> because that manipulative spirit will make you think you have to respond because they called you. No. When you know a person is not flowing in the way that God needs them to flow, oh, hallelujah, then you need to let it go. You might feel isolated. You might end up by yourself. All right. You might realize day after day, nobody is calling me. And then you take that time and you steal away to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Allow him to begin to deposit some things into your heart, into your mind, yes, yes, into yes. your spirit. Thank you, Father. God wants to prepare this ministry yes, for a new Lord. era. Yes. He wants to expand the borders yes. of Great Redeemer. Yes. New churches are going to come up. Great Redeemer, one, two, and three. Yes. I don't Thank know you, where they're going to be, but okay. they're coming. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We got to do some housekeeping. Word says, if my people yes. who are called by my name uh, my Lord Jesus. Would, humble. would humble themselves. Yes. 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 Listen, humble. <laughs> humble yourself. That's the key. Shut your mouth sometimes. That's the key. Stop having to respond and say something. Every time somebody says something to you, just listen. Oh. <laughs> Believe that God knows what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you have a vision that's down here, but Pastor Smallwood has a vision that's up here. And you don't see what she sees. And so every time you buck against her, you're not bucking against her. You're bucking against God. Amen. Humble yourself and pray. And seek his face. Yes. And turn, uh -huh. not a 360 degree, no, but a, one, a, a 90 degree, a half turn, 190, 180. thank you, 180, 180. 180. y'all got me, amen, and move in that direction, yes, Lord. Yeah. this is what God promises, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. That he will hear from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, All right, yes. Thank you, Lord. He will forgive your sins. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. And he will heal the land. Thank yes. you, Lord. I told you the last time I was here, mm -hmm. Pastor Smallwood didn't get sick. It wasn't about her, but it was about you. Remember I told you that? Yes. It's about if you were going to be faithful, if you were going to do and continue on the work that God had used her to pour into you. Remember that? Yes. Amen. Amen. She's ready for this new era. She's ready for this new dimension. All right. But God wants you to be ready. Hallelujah. He needs to pull down some strongholds and some things in your mind. You need to let go of some hurt and some pain. You hear me? You gotta get your mind right. 
But if your mind is right, the body will follow. Yes, yes, yes. But if the mind is all jacked up, Come on. the body is all jacked up. Now, Lord. And for too long, the head of this house has been ready. Yes. But the body's still been wandering, trying to do whatever it wants to do. My God. Wow. All right. And God is saying, not anymore. You got to make a choice. Yes. You need to go. You got to go all the way. That's it. That's it. Ain't no more dipping and dabbing. Ain't no more in and out, in right. and out, in and out. Right. 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 I'm here today, and then when you say something to me, I'm not here. All right. <laughs> I'm here today, but then when trouble comes, I'm gone. You gotta choose. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Because if you remain lukewarm, God will spit you out. Right. We're gonna ask the musicians to begin to play. This is serious. You hear me? Yes, Lord. This is serious. This is life or death. Jesus is soon to come. And he needs a people that is ready. He needs a people that is pure. He needs a people that are holy. Hallelujah. It's time to make up your mind. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Who will you serve? Thank you, Jesus. What will you do? Everyone closing their eyes, not anyone looking around. 